The football team looks to start a winning streak. Women's soccer off to a rocky start. It's been a long summer, but we're back in Studio B ready to talk sports. This is Cardinal Sports Live, and it starts right now. Hello and welcome to the first Cardinal Sports Live show of the semester. I am your host, Claire McGuire, and alongside me tonight is Parker Stewart and Kyle Kedra. Kyle, I saw that you got to explore Arizona a little I bit did. this summer. I'm just wondering, is it really a dry heat? Uh, yes, most, <laughs> most definitely. I'm actually really not a fan of it. I kind of like, you won't hear this often, I like the Midwest and that uh, kind of cloudy, humidity type weather and you're um, a meteorologist I was right. I actually I oh, okay. actually switched um, so it's been interesting I got to go out to Tucson um, visit some family uh, see my cousins and other relatives that I haven't got to see in a while it was really cool I got to go explore some national parks out there that they have where I really got to experience that uh, dry heat where you're just sweating just from the Sun not really the humidity like we have out there it was a good trip so if you really like the Sun um, and 110 plus degrees, uh, a good majority of the time, the out west over in that area is for you. Yeah. Now, Parker, I know you're a huge Liverpool fan, and I'm just wondering, how are they holding up so far in the Premier League? A rocky start is what I would say if I had to describe oh, okay. it. Um, a 3 3 draw against Watford, uh, a mid table side. Not the best start to a season you would want as a Liverpool fan. No bias, obviously. <laughs> uh, but then they got uh, start to going a little bit better, a 1-0 win, a uh, scrappy 1-0 win at it against Palace. And then they went on to face Arsenal, uh, a massive 4-0 win against them, and then went to international break, which for people who don't know what that is, it's when the, uh, the, the club players, so example, their captain, Jordan Henderson, would go play for England um, for their national team. And then they came back, so I think the rhythm was lost in that, in that sense, and they got a massive whopping of 5-0 against Manchester City at the Etihad. So um, got a red card from Sadio Mane, their most, arguably, arguably their most important player of the season. And Felipe Coutinho is back after the long transfer saga of him might going to Barcelona, uh, but it's going to start again this Saturday when they host Burnley. Gotcha. I am definitely one of those people who is clueless about soccer. The most I know is in FIFA, B is kick. That's all I know. But That's right. Yep. We're going to talk some Ball State sports. You guys ready? Yes. We're all ready. All right. Well, this may be our first show of the year, but that didn't hold the athletic department back from starting the seasons without us. We're going to talk, kick things off tonight by talking some football. The team sits with a record of 1-1, one one, coming off an impressive win over the University of Alabama at Birmingham. The Cards have been utilizing the new freshman class to its full potential, featuring 21 of the recruits on the field in the first two games of the season. What do you guys think the, 2020, the 2021 class has to offer this season offensively? Kyle, go ahead. Honestly, I think they have a lot to offer, especially with Justin Hall, who's really, he's a wide receiver, really showcasing his skills. He's only 5'9", 160 pounds, but he is athletic and fast. A good comparison, it's still really early, um, in uh, his career, but Antonio Brown, uh, kind of that smaller, runs outs really well, um, locate the ball, find it. He had a really nice one-handed catch uh, in this past uh, game on, along the sideline. Typically what he's been averaging, he's still improving, slowly building up uh, his stock and really getting more recognition from other teams and the coaching staff. Is against Illinois, he only had two catches for 36 yards. But then the game against UAB, he exploded with eight catches for 94 yards and one touchdown. He's really quick. And then Mike News really trying to showcase, even though he hasn't gotten a lot of yards so far, um, trying to get him along the edge, uh, use his speed, uh, get him in the rushing game. Uh, again, he hasn't really averaged more than five yards. But with uh, Tennessee Tech coming up, uh, I'm expecting him to get around the edge and really explode, um, have a big game rushing. Uh, with a couple carries and then along with uh, continuing his performance from last week, um, at least I'd say seven catches and then hopefully a touchdown as well. All good points. You know, that fire, that fire plug athletic build type, you know, yep. does work out most of the time. So, Parker, what do you think? 
Justin Hall, it was a good point you mentioned. He's uh, one of the star receive, wide receivers so far already in his freshman year, and he's from Douglasville, Georgia. And let's first give a, a, a big credit to the assistant coach, uh, Clevis Jackson, for, for getting um, eight recruits from the state of Georgia. It, very impressive. He was named the, uh, the 247 Sports MAC Recruiter of the Year. Ball State ranks second in the MAC for uh, the, re the recruiting class of 2021. So impressive stuff there. But you look at another offensive power of Caleb Huntley, also from Georgia. He, uh, you look at the senior, the senior season stats he had in high school, rushed for over 100 yards per game, over 1,400 yards in the whole season wow. with, uh, with 13 touchdowns, holds a single season record uh, for rushing yards and rushing yards per game as a, in his senior season. So a lot of promising stuff, and he, she showed it in the first two games already. You look at the game he had against Illinois, mm -hmm. eight rushes, 42 yards, longest was 28. Decent, decent game against a, a Big Ten opponent like Illinois. Of course, they're not – you know, the Ohio State and the Michigan of the pack, but they're still a Big Ten side, impressive stuff. And then you look at the game he had against uh, last week against UAB, uh, at 10 rushes, 89 yards, a massive 52-yard um, touchdown run to, to close off the second quarter to give Ball State that 21-17 lead going into the half. Um, if I had to compare him to a player like you did for Justin Hall, I'm going to go Marshawn Lynch, oh, yes. beast mode. Beast mode. Um, beast mode. I'm not sure if his favorite candy is Skittles, but he isn't <laughs> the fastest. He doesn't have the, the, the best acceleration, but when he gets going, it takes three or four guys to get him down. Uh, very powerful. He's very agile for his size, moves laterally, light, uh, left to right very well and uh, a, a bulky running back with great strength. I can't wait to see what he does against Tennessee Tech. Mm -hmm. um, it should be a great game. You know, I expect over 100 rushing yards. I mean, Absolutely. Uh, this Tennessee Tech side is, uh, has a lot of, over 400 yards of rushing. And then he, no. really, he really gets the benefit, too, from uh, James Gilbert. Um, is he's really not showcasing uh, his running ability this year. The first game he did cramp up against Illinois in the third quarter when he slowly started to get going. He's only averaging about 3.1 yards per carry. Uh, but I'm really expecting him to kind of step up, showcase that leadership where he can – he's more of a pick-and-choose type back. Uh, I would view him more as a Le'Veon Bell where he kind of waits for the hole, sits, and then goes, whereas um, Caleb Huntley is kind of more – he sees it, goes beast mode right down the hole, um, really hard to stop him. And it's good to have another running back like – Huntley, yeah. uh, if Gilbert needs some of the weight taken off, yeah. it's, great, it's great to have him. Now I'm wondering how much of do you think that, how much of Gilbert's lack of um, performance this season so far is mental because of this uh, uh, incoming freshman class? I think it's uh, interesting because he's not seeing as many carries as he typically would or he knows people are kind of, uh, you have good competition coming that way. So it may be uh, factoring in because he's not seeing as many touches in practice it's kind of taking away he can't really feel as well as he did where the line would be blocking how the line's kind of setting up the blocks picking and choosing his holes um, so I think that's going to factor in a little bit I think he'll come more into mid-season form and we'll kind of get more into a two-back set with uh, him and Caleb and if I was Gilbert I would not be worried uh, like you said competition is always good um, you have a freshman running back like Huntley to uh, compete with in practice. And like you said, he went out against Illinois. Yeah. He's an established running back in, in the NCAA. Um, so I don't think he should be worried at all. Confidence should still be up there. Again, he had that breakout season last year. Yeah. He should be pretty confident going into Tennessee Tech. Absolutely. All good points. All right. Now let's turn the focus to the defensive side of the game. The Cards are leading the Mid-American Conference in sacks thus far. How much of this success do you think can be credited to our new defensive coordinator, David Elson. Parker, go ahead. Not much, to be honest. <laughs> it's in his first season, but you, you, go to, uh, you go to Illinois for your first game and you allow 21 points, which is, is pretty decent. Yep. You know, it's, or 24 points, excuse me. It's, it's impressive. You, obviously, you had the interception from, uh, from Bryce Cosby, another freshman uh, outstanding prospect as, at the safety position. But then you go back home and you face a side like UAB just getting their football program back. Yep. and you allow 31 points, Ball State can't score 51 points each game and, and concede 51 yep. if they want to keep going and, and getting these wins. So not much to say uh, in, in giving credit to David Elson, but you know, knowing that the MAC, and when you talked about the sacks and how Ball State leads in the sacks, um, they're, and knowing that uh, half the MAC team has played better sides, it's not surprising that Ball State leads the sack category. Um, again, if they want to keep getting the wins, Ball State can't. You know, concede 50 or 31 points against a side like UAB when they only scored 38 in their first match against Alabama A&M. 
Absolutely. Quickly, Kyle, what do you think? But I think it's still a huge accomplishment when you have Anthony Winbush. I think uh, David has done a really good job um, letting Anthony uh, focus on just go get the quarterback. That's why he's leading the country in sacks at 4.5, and he's also leading the country with seven tackles for loss as well. Um, so that's one really good positive thing I think he's done with the defense. But overall, I would kind of say it's iffy. Um, he gets some credit because uh, the players, uh, from what I've heard, they told me that it's still similar terminology and kind of play scheme that they're using. Um, just a few th tweaks here and there and kind of establishing a 4-3 or 3-4. Three, four. Absolutely. Now, looking forward, if we take the talent from the freshman class, the returning leaders of our team, our new defensive coordinator, and Mike New returning for his second season, what other factors do you think the Cardinals can improve on th to build a long-term success? Well, uh, for one, uh, the secondary, uh, the de defensive secondary. I'm still not keen on them yet. Um, we. Granted, I do feel it's more with our defensive line and our linebackers for how many rushing yards we did give up this uh, past game, um, over 300. But the secondary, these past couple years, they've started out really well. And then as soon as we got into conference play, we've just been getting destroyed. Uh, we were kind of in the bottom half of the MAC, if not close to last uh, in yards, um, passing yards per game. Um, it, it, so health-wise, staying healthy, if we can keep our starters still in, um, that's what I'm kind of waiting on. Uh, so hopefully just keep on improving the secondary is key for me. Absolutely. And I think for me it's the rush, it's the rush defense that needs the most improvement. Over 400 yards in the first two games, it's pretty unacceptable if Ball yeah. State want to get more wins. Uh, but you, uh, another thing is you have to win your home games. One and four last season. Not great, and you have you look at the the rest of the home games they have. It's Tennessee Tech, and then they have Central Michigan, where they went up to uh, Central Michigan last year, only lost by three points yep. against the Chippewas, uh, a blowout against Toledo, uh, not a great performance from them last season. But they have them at home, Buffalo, an impressive win up in New York last year, and then of course the uh, one point loss in Oxford against Miami of Ohio. That's back at Schumann Stadium. So yep. a lot of ex exciting stuff, but I think home games and the rush defense is is what most needs improvement Absolutely. On. It's very important to utilize that home crowd and that right. yeah. the cheerleaders of our, of our <laughs> school, you know. Yes. So when we get back to Cardinal Sports Live, we will give our thoughts on Ball State soccer and their tough schedule. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Switching things over to women's soccer, our Lady Cards have not been having the most promising start of the season. Losing five of their last six games, tomorrow night they face Western Illinois, which will wrap up the non-conference portion of its schedule. They will also be continuing the tradition of holding senior night on the final game at home before getting into the real action of the season. How can those seven veterans being recognized change the momentum back in the favor for our, our school? Well, for one, not to diss the soccer uh, team, they've played some tough competition. Um, for one, going down to Texas, completely different um, climate, a lot more humid. Uh, they were versing some teams that were in the NCAA tournament. Uh, they put up a good fight against Notre Dame, but wasn't good enough getting basically blown out in the second half, losing 4-0. But I got high expectations. The big thing for me with the seniors is establishing a keeper. Between the two, Alyssa Heinchel, Heinchel and Trista Studeville, uh, they both have been kind of varying and starting. Uh, so it's kind of led to inconsistency where with the defense having a completely young and kind of new defense, um, losing uh, five predominant seniors last year. Makes a big difference. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. Uh, so kind of building that chemistry, and then when you're bringing in a different keeper each game, especially against tough competitions, it's kind of harder um, for the defense to kind of figure out what your keeper, keeper wants, if she wants you to st step, if she, got, if she has the ball, um, lay off. Uh, so it's going to be up to Craig Roberts to kind of establish who's going to be our starting keeper going forward. Because I do see a lot of uh, skill and potential with our soccer team. That's why we're uh, projected to finish first in the MAC. Um, and I still th think we have the capability of doing that. We have great seniors. We have uh, some great upperclassmen. Got Sam, Sam Campbell um, scoring goals. Uh, Allison Abbey, I think she's doing really great uh, in the midfield, kind of keeping the pace and tempo. Um, so it's kind of, I think, with the senior leadership, 
start from the back and work your way up. Absolutely. And let's not forget that the women's volleyball last season did accomplish that yep. task indeed. So anything is possible. Parker, what do you think? I like the point that Kyle made about the two goalkeepers. You look at Stuttville. She's had the most minutes this year, 335 um, total minutes. And then you look at Heinschel at 307. And it's interesting to see how Roberts um, fluctuates on how he uh, brings in both those goalkeepers because Stuteville has let in, I believe, eight goals, ten goals, yeah. something like that. And it's then, yeah, it's a high number and compared to Heinschel, only two. So she's, she's a rock in, in, in between the post. But I really think it is the defense that, that you start there and then build your way up. Um, and for the seniors, obviously – it goes without saying they don't want their career to end yep. with, a, with a poor season, and it, it, it's gotten off that start. But I think really the key is doing your best at home. Like I mentioned for the football team, they've only had two home games this year, one win, one draw. So they're undefeated at home. Absolutely. All their road games, a loss, 0-5. And, and they did play some uh, top quality opponents like Notre Dame, Baylor, TCU, those two teams being in the Big 12, um, going to the NCAA tournament. So just find it within themselves to bring – um, the best out of them and, and the best out of the young players as they emerge into the starting 11. Absolutely. And if I'm correct, I'm, I believe that there's six more home games after this first yes. home game of the season. So there's plenty of time for them to get some more wins under their belt. It's an early part of the season. So we'll see what turns out for this soccer team. Plus, exactly. plus being the kind of defending MAC uh, West champs, uh, hopefully they can continue to keep that streak alive. It just all depends on going into the tournament. Teams have kind of established that thing, so I think that senior class is really set, and I know they're getting focused to really get over that hump, which is why I'm not as worried yet um, heading into tournament play. Absolutely. Uh, and I think the Hard. most important thing is, is that they have to start it out tomorrow night against Western Illinois before they get into MAC play. Get that last non-conference win out of the way, go into the MAC play um, with some big confidence. Absolutely. As you mentioned, Tomorrow night is senior night, so be sure to show your support and catch their game at 5 p.m. at Briner Sports Complex just north of Schumann Stadium. Now let's talk underdogs. I will be the first to attest that there is no I in team, but tell me who you see stepping up and becoming a standout as the season progresses for the soccer team. I'm going to go with Julia Elfbo, uh, a, a highly talented sophomore. She, um, you look at the awards that she got last year, Mid-American Conference All-Freshman last year, started 10 of the 11 MAC games Ball State had. That's very impressive as a freshman deal, Absolutely. especially under uh, an established coach like Craig Roberts and the amazing team they did have last year. Um, appeared in all 20 games, ranked fourth in, 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 on the team in total points. She likes to control the midfield, and she is a good dribbler with the ball through the midfield and then distributes that up top. Uh, only four shots this year, two on target, so 50% on goal. Still hasn't gotten one in the back of the net, but she's a good finisher, and I, I, I know she'll find her way. I would look at more uh, Lauren, Lauren Roll. Um, she's uh, right side or left side mid. She kind of varies. She isn't as tactically um, quick with her feet, um, but she is very skilled on the ball, um, finding uh, other players, and then kind of developing that chemistry with Sam Campbell and the other uh, forwards. I think she's going to be a big key, but I would still go back to the keepers, establishing it. Personally, I would go with Alyssa Heinschel um, in, in goal. I know she did very well uh, this past season. Kind of set her in, give her a couple more starts in a row, um, see if she holds up, uh, and then go from there. Absolutely. All good points, guys. Coming up on Cardinal Sports Live is a little segment we like to call Hot Seat. This is going to be fun. Stay with us. Now is the time for our final segment of the show. I'm going to put Parker and Kyle here on the hot seat where they will Let's have go. 60 seconds to pitch to you, the viewers, which athlete should be named our Cardinal of the Week. This can be for our accomplishments on or off the field. We will use social media sites to create a poll, and that will be posted once the show is over. So don't tune out just yet. Whichever analyst wins will have serious bragging rights the next time you guys are featured on the show. So, Kyle, seniority. You're up first. Let's okay. hear it. Okay, 60 seconds. Here we go. Well, my person is going to be Riley Neal. Uh, I'm expecting him to have a big game uh, this coming uh, week, but you just look at his performance these past couple of weeks, really has developed, started to develop chemistry with his receivers. Just look at Riley Miller, um, really has been his kind of go-to target. And then going back to Justin Hall, kind of that dominant freshman. He's uh, been 21 of 34 against Illinois with his uh, – passing uh, attempts and completions, and then this past game, 23 of 34. And then each game, he's only improved in yards. Uh, it went from 204 to 217. And then I think his rushing will also improve 
He had two touchdowns last year against UA, or this past week against UAB. I look for that number to increase. Um, I see him also rushing on the ground for at least close to 100 yards along with passing. I'm going to I'm gonna go high and go uh, around 230. We'll hold you to that. So, That's a bold prediction. So, Very bold. So he's going to, I'm going to say 80 yards rushing and then around 230 yards passing if Mike New keeps him in the game uh, throughout. So I, he's going to be, he's been kind of my uh, player of the week and then he's going to be my player of the week coming up. So good stuff. All right, I think that was sixty seconds, right? Hopefully, okay. hopefully. If Parker, not, <laughs> Parker, you're up. I have I have a guy to talk about as well. I think we both broke the rules a little bit. Obviously, the game being on Saturday, yeah. Cardinal of the Week, yeah. one day short, yeah. but you know it's all right. Caleb Huntley is my Cardinal Sports Live Cardinal of the Week. Um, beast mode again, uh, compared to Marshawn Lynch, ten rushes, eighty nine yards, and a massive fifty two yard touchdown run to cap off. Uh, a decent first half, but you get the lead going into the second half. And I, I think Ball State probably still would have won the game despite not scoring that last touchdown going into the, uh, into the second half. But they were determined to take the lead before the half, and then they got scored on uh, with under five minutes to go and gave it, and they put it in the hands, literally, of, of Caleb Huntley, and he <laughs> ran 52 <laughs> yards all the way, and then they ended up beating UAB 51-31. Um, to 31. So a good result overall, but Caleb Huntley really impressed me, and he's going to impress again against Tennessee Tech. Absolutely. My, predi my bold prediction, 150 yards Ooh. and, and, two, and three touchdowns. On Saturday? On Saturday. Very bold, very I, bold. I mean, he has the possibility because uh, Tennessee Tech has been uh, giving up 303 yards on the ground. So, But I'm still confident because they've also, for Riley Neal, because they've also been giving up 424 yards uh, through the air. So we'll see how this uh, kind of plays out. I think both will have a very important factor yeah. in, in hopefully what is a win. Now, yeah. if Coach... Mike knew we're here. Do you think he would agree with you that uh, he could be compared to Marshawn Lynch? Yeah, I think he would agree. If, I mean, obviously he watched his highlight tapes in high school. He had to recruit well, and he saw what he, what he did in high school. Again, 1,400 rushing yards, 13 touchdowns in his senior season. Incredible. I mean, he's a stocky guy, um, very agile. Again, like I mentioned earlier, he's a beast. He's beast mode. And then that 52-yard run, uh, he was just beautiful. It, it, he broke, I think, like three or four tackles where uh, two guys were out on him at once, just kind of high-stepped his way, just went full beast mode, just like get off me <laughs> as he kind of danced his way into the end zone. So I think Mike knew he's going to be like, hit the hole and then just do your thing. That's uh, why we brought you here, um, and then that's why uh, he's has a possibility to be our uh, Cardinal of the Week. So. Very true, very true. Oh, I'm sure the three of us could talk Ball State sports all night, but unfortunately that's all the time we have for the tonight's show. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at BSU underscore CSL so you can vote for our Cardinal of the Week. Yep. You heard both the pitches, it's time. Also like us on Facebook at Cardinal Sports Live. I want to recognize my analysts once again, Parker Stewart, Kyle Kedra, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Also thank you to those behind the scenes who make this show possible. Most importantly, thank you for watching. I'm Claire McGuire, and I'll see you here next week for another episode of Cardinal Sports Live.